Today, we are going to be making one of the most basic versions of a synthesizer possible in Unity. We will do this by utilizing Unity's built-in on audio filter read and mathf.sign methods to create a simple sine wave that we can hear. This is an intermediate level project, so you should be familiar with arrays and loops, and I'm also assuming that you have at least some understanding of scripting in C-sharp and working with Unity. Here's what we're going to be making. This is a monophonic sine wave oscillator that plays an A major scale. It goes to the next note each time you press the spacebar. Once you have created this, you should be able to easily expand it on your own in any direction you can imagine with basic C-sharp skills. From creating procedural music for your games to making a full customizable synth you can play with your computer keyboard. So we have here a brand new Unity project. And the first thing we're going to do is create an empty game object. Then we're going to select that game object and add an audio source. And we are going to add a brand new C Sharp script and we're going to call it Oscillator. Now let's open up the script. The first thing that we want to do is get rid of the start and update functions. Now we need to declare our variables. We have a public double called frequency, and we're going to set it to 440. This is the frequency in hertz of the tone that the oscillator will produce. We have a private double called increment, and this is the amount of distance the wave will be moving each frame, and it's determined by the frequency. We have a private double called phase, which is our actual location on the wave. We have a private double called sampling frequency, which we will set to 48,000 or 48k, the frequency at which Unity's audio engine runs by default. And we have a public float called gain, which will be the actual power or volume of the oscillator. So let's create our on audio filter read function. Now this is built into Unity, and as long as an audio source is attached to our object, it will work. Not only to play sounds we create, but to analyze sounds the audio source is playing. On audio filter read passes us an array of floats, which we will call data, and an integer which tells us the number of channels. We will calculate the increment based on the frequencies so we know how far to move on the x-axis of our waveform. Increment equals frequency times 2 times mathf.pi divided by sampling frequency. Now we will set up a for loop to iterate through the data in order to set the position of the phase, which is our y-axis of our waveform. phase plus equals increment. Now we're actually going to set the waveform data using the mathf.sign function. All we need to do is plug in the phase and multiply by the gain. We also need to cast these doubles as floats for the mathf functions to work. Next, we copy the data over to the second channel to make sure that the sound plays out of both speakers and not just one. And finally, we'll reset the phase of the waveform if it makes a full revolution. Let's give it a little test, shall we? Push play in the editor and select the object in the inspector. Bring up the gain just a little bit and play with the frequency. Push play again when you've had enough. Now let's add keyboard control to our synthesizer. Back in Visual Studio, let's add a new variable, a float called volume. This will be considered our on volume, our all the way up volume. Be careful because values higher than 1.0 run the risk of damaging your speakers, headphones, and especially your ears. I'll set this to 0.1f. Now let's recreate our update function. Inside of the update function, we're going to check for a key up and a key down on the spacebar. Inside of the get key down, we're going to set the gain to the value of volume. And inside of get key up, we're going to set the gain to zero. Now let's test it out. Push play in Unity, and now we can use the spacebar to make the beeps happen. Now it's time to add different notes to our synthesizer. 
Back in Visual Studio, we're going to add a new array of floats called frequencies and an integer called this freak. In our start function, let's set the length of the array to 8 and the value of each one to the frequencies of the A major scale. I just Google searched these. 440, 494, 554, 587, 659, 740, 831, 880. In our update function, let's assign the new frequency on each key down. Set the frequency to the float and the position of this freak in the frequencies array. Then add 1 to this freak. The modulo sign, or the percent sign, performs a modulo function, and will give you the remainder of the two numbers after they get divided. In this case, what it does for us is it resets our this freak back to zero as soon as it gets higher than the length of our frequency array. So let's test it out. Well, here it is, cycling through the notes and choosing the next note whenever we hit the key. Sine waves are great, but there are plenty more waveforms to experiment with. Here's a square wave. And here's a triangle wave. Try this code out for yourself. Experiment with these different waveforms. Add the values together, divide them, average them, and listen to the new sounds they'll make. Let your ears be the judge. We now have the basics of procedural sound synthesis in Unity. You can now expand it in any one of a million ways. You could use a random number generators to create random melodies for your games, or you could expand the keyboard control and make more of a playable keyboard synthesizer. You could experiment with all sorts of small adjustments to the math behind the oscillators for unlimited different effects. From Prismic Studios, I'm Dan Ocablamo, and I sure hope you learned something today. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.